What's that, everybody? Boy Big Brando, and welcome to Back to Basics. Today, we're talking about heat presses. Now, if you're just getting into this business, chances are you've been looking at a lot of videos about heat presses. You've been looking on eBay, you've been looking on Craigslist, you've been looking on OfferUp, you've been looking on Amazon, trying to find the best heat press that'll fit your budget. Now, a lot of times you're probably gonna run into guys like myself on YouTube talking about heat presses. Then you're gonna be a little bit worried about the information that we're sharing about these heat presses because you're probably thinking, Man, this guy's getting paid to say that. Man, this guy's just doing this because he's getting a check for it. And you're right. Some guys are getting paid to talk about certain heat presses, but not everybody. For myself, if you went back to the very first video when I showed me heat pressing onto a t-shirt, you'll see I was using a Signature Series heat press. This is way before I started working with Heat Press Nation. I was using that Heat Press Nation press way before I jumped onto YouTube. I've been talking about that press since I got onto YouTube and I still use it till this day. It's not because I get paid for it. It's not because Heat Press Nation tells me to do it. It's because this press is super reliable. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the presses that I use, why I use them, the functions that I like out of a heat press. But in no way do you have to use the same exact equipment that I do. I'm only explaining to you guys the functions that I look for in a heat press, the way I test out certain heat presses, what I like, what I don't like, and what I'm looking for out of a heat press. So that way, when you do decide to buy one, you can make an educated decision on what equipment to buy, whatever fits your budget, as long as it hits every single function you need it to do. And you wanna make sure it's gonna operate flawless because there's nothing worse then you get into a middle of a job and then your press takes a dump on you or the heating element gets all wacky and then you can't finish the job. Reliability is key when it comes to a heat press. So like I said, you do not have to buy the same exact equipment that I use. You can buy whatever you want. You could do whatever you want. I just wanna help inform you guys on some of these presses because this is a big purchase. This is gonna be a big statement of your work. Like your business is basically gonna be built around the heat press. So it's a pretty important part of the business. You know what I mean? So if we're talking single point of failure, if your heat press is the main thing in your business and that thing doesn't operate well, then your whole business is down. See what I'm saying? So let's start off by answering the question, should you get an eight in one, 10 in one press? Most of you guys seen these on Amazon and on eBay and it does shirts, it does hats, it does mugs, it does labels, it does everything. What do I think about that press? I personally don't like it. I've had a bad experience with those presses years ago, long time ago, I invested in something like that because I was thinking, oh shit, well, if I just get this press, it'll do all these different things. These are all the different things I wanna get into, endless possibilities and make money. But what I ran into was you're constantly switching out the heating element, right? So if you wanted to do hats, you take the t-shirt one off, you plug in the hat one, slap on the bottom platen, and then you have all these attachments. But constantly taking out the heating element was a horrible experience for myself. I was getting inconsistent heat. The plugs and pins were getting jacked up because I was constantly taking it in and out. And then I wasn't even using like six of the different attachments. I was only using the t-shirt one and the hat one. In my head, I was like, man, I'm gonna be doing mugs, I'm gonna be doing all kind of stuff, but I never even used them. So the selling point is cool, right? Hey, you could do all of these different things with this one press. But like we talked about in the first video, that's not your big statement of work, or if you're not building your business around that, structuring your business as such, you really don't need all that stuff, right? But if you were looking into getting one of those eight and ones, 10 in ones or whatever it is, you can buy it at your own risk, try it out, because there are some positive reviews but there's also a lot of negative reviews about it. So once again, do your research, make sure you make an educated purchase because like I said, this is the main part of your business. And if that thing goes down, then your business is taking a dump. Now, let's talk about the press that I use. I currently use the Signature Pro by Heat Press Nation. The press size is 15 by 15. This is another common question that people think that should they get a 15 by 15 or 16 by 20? They think 16 by 20, bigger, better, I need that one. Not the case. Bigger the press, bigger the design size. And that's about it. Just because it's bigger doesn't mean that it's gonna be better. For myself, I never design anything bigger than 15 inches wide or 15 inches long. All of my designs stay within those borders so I don't need a 16 by 20. If I had a 16 by 20, I'd just be wasting a lot of real estate. Next question is, well, if I'm doing 3X and 5X t-shirts, I need to get a bigger press because it's a bigger t-shirt. Once again, press size only determines the design size. See what I'm saying? So if your press is a 15 by 15, your designs have to be 
within 15 inches by 15 inches. Here's a ruler. I'm wearing an extra large t-shirt. Where my finger is right here, this is 15 inches. If you did a whole 15 inch design, the design would be landing inside the armpit. See what I'm saying? Most of my designs stay within 12 inches. Here's my finger on the 12 inch mark. That's where it is. Nipple to nipple, I'm 11 inches. 12 inches is usually my max when it comes to design size. So if I'm doing 12 inch designs, 16 by 20 is overkill. See what I'm saying? So just because a press is bigger, doesn't mean that it's better. It's only determining your design size. That's it. So like I said, I use a 15 by 15 Signature Pro. What's the difference between Signature Series, Signature Pro? Signature Pro has a sure pressure now. Signature Series does not. This is an auto open press. My Signature Series I had for 10 plus years. The only reason I upgraded was strictly for that sure pressure knob. That's about it. And I put thousands on top of thousands on top of thousands of shirts through my Signature Series press. That's the one you see at the beginning of my videos. That's the one that you've seen since I jumped onto YouTube and I was using it way before I even got onto YouTube. It's been a workhorse. It's been reliable. I've never had any issues with it. So when the Signature Pro came out, I was on the fence about upgrading, but the sure pressure knob is what really sold me on it. So I ended up buying it. Yes, I bought the press. They didn't give it to me for free. I bought the press. I ended up selling my Signature Series and I still got my money back for the Signature Series when I sold it on OfferUp. It's crazy because these heat presses hold their value. The name, Heat Press Nation, solid company. So if you are to sell it on Craigslist or OfferUp, it's easy to get your money for it. And on top of that, these things sell out so fast that they're in high demand. Super popular press. Not only because I talk about it and other content creators talk about it, but because it's reliable. So if you were to ever buy one, you can always resell it and still pretty much get your money back for it. So now I'm gonna take the camera, get a little bit closer and show you guys some of these features. All right, let me apologize for filming this at a weird, awkward angle, but the table's a little low and I wanna make sure I get the press in the frame so I can talk to you guys about it, all right? So the main reason why I use the Signature Series or Signature Pro heat press is for this function alone right here. You see this? This is a slide out drawer. Now, one of the reasons why I like using a slide out drawer heat press and why I prefer a slide out drawer heat press over traditional clamshell that's like this and this part doesn't move and you just up and down is when you have something like this, you're laying the t-shirt in, you're working directly underneath the heat. So you gotta lay your t-shirt down and then you gotta place your transfer down. You're working under the heat. Say you're peeling off the transfer, you could potentially hit your hand on the top of this. It happens all the time, you burn the shit out of your knuckles. Not fun. This right here, slide this baby out. Now you're working not under the heat. Lay your shirt down, lay up your transfer because you're looking down directly at it. Make sure it's straight, not working underneath the heat. Push that sucker in, press it, you're good to go. Now, this one right here is the Signature Pro and it comes with this right here, which is the Sure Pressure Knob. Sure Pressure Knob means there's a readout down here that says this is your pressure setting. So if you spin this down and it's at 45, you know that when it's at 45, you're pressing on hoodies. Say if you need it to go a lot tighter and a lot heavier, you press it down, you go down to 55. When you're at 55, you know that's for t-shirts, you write those numbers down. So that way, whenever you're pressing on something that requires heavy pressure and you're like, all right, I'm pressing on a t-shirt, let me adjust my pressure, make sure my shirt pressure knob is at 55 because I figured out that 55 is the best heavy pressure for t-shirts. Same exact thing goes for the hoodies. Say if you need to press a hoodie at heavy pressure, you adjust this to get down to the heaviest pressure you can. If it's at 45, you write down 45. That's how I personally do things. Now, say if you didn't have that sure pressure knob and you just have a regular knob on the top, what I like to do is take a Sharpie and I'll mark a thread on that knob. The thread that you could see at the very bottom, I'll mark that, like let's say black will be for heavy pressure for a t-shirt. And then I'll take a red Sharpie and then adjust the pressure for a hoodie if you're doing t-shirts and hoodies. And then for the hoodie, I'll back it off and make sure I get the tight pressure for a hoodie. And then I'll mark it with a red line. So I know if I'm pressing on hoodies with a certain transfer that needs heavy pressure, I go to the red line. If I'm looking for heavy pressure for a t-shirt, I'll go to the black line, so on and so on. That's how I was doing it with my old Signature Series heat press. This is the Signature Pro. The reason I got it was for that sure pressure knob, all right? So once again, Signature Pro heat press. Look for this function, 
slide out drawer or swing away. Swing away works because you're not working directly under the heat. This whole platen right here will swing out so that way you're not working directly under the heat. That's the main thing you're looking for is not working underneath the heat. Is it bad to do that? No, it can still be done. But you run the risk, like I said, of burning your knuckles when you're peeling up transfers, laying stuff down straight. It's all about production. It's all about efficiency. What makes sense to you? This slide out drawer makes a shitload of sense to me. So that's why I've been using it for years because of that. I don't know how many times on my other older presses I was burning my knuckles or laying stuff down crooked or my t-shirts weren't down straight because I was working directly under the heat. If this thing's heated up at 380 and you got your arms under here, you're sweating all over your t-shirt, you're trying to get stuff done, it gets crazy. Make things easier on yourself. Look for functions that make sense to you. Slide out drawer makes a whole lot of sense to me. So once again, I'm gonna leave links to all these presses and stuff in the description box for you. You don't have to buy something like this if you didn't want to. These presses right here sell out quick. And I'm talking about they go up, they restock them, and they're gone within hours. These presses are popular, not because I'm talking about them, but because they're reliable. And this function right here, man, back when I was looking for a heat press 15 years ago, something like that, because I was tired of burning my knuckles. Signature series was the first press I seen that had this function. There might've been other presses out there, but I don't know nothing about those. I took a chance on Heat Press Nation because they're local to Southern California, and it was easy for me to buy it online and go in there and pick it up. Cause I wasn't sure what shipping was gonna be like. I wasn't sure about any of that stuff. I knew that they were close by so I could go and pick it up myself. That's why I went with them. I've been with them ever since. Years and years and years strong with the same company and their presses have never let me down. All right, now that you've seen the Signature Pro 15 by 15 heat press, let's talk about my Signature Series hat press. Now, is a hat press needed? No, it's not. But if you wanted to offer hats, then it would be neat. If your main statement of work is just gonna be t-shirts when you first get going, focus on the t-shirts. You can always add something like this later. Business starts booming, you're making money, you can always buy a hat press after. Just because you have a hat press, does that mean you can only do hats? No, because a hat press can also be used for neck labels, can also be used for sleeve hits. It could be used for baby onesies, toddler t-shirts. There's a lot of other things that you can use this press for outside of doing hats. But let's talk about why I picked the Signature Series Cat Press. See this right here? This is a removable plat. This press right here comes with four of them, but you're probably thinking, well, why the hell do you need that? So let's say that your press that you bought only comes with one of these, one standard size. And let's say you're pressing on some of these five panel unstructured hats. They're pressing good, everything looks good. And then you get somebody that says, hey man, I want some truckers done. Can you do some truckers? And you're like, yeah. So now you get some truckers. But then when you press on it, you notice that you're getting all these like crazy creases on the hat when you're pressing it down. You can't figure out why. It's because the platen size doesn't fit this hat. All hats are different sizes. So as you can see, this five panel unstructured, low crown. This trucker hat, high crown. Five panel trucker hat, high crown, low crown. That small platen fits this one but it does not fit this one. So you gotta remember, this press right here comes with four different ones. Small, all the way up to a big one, and everything in between. So now you have different size platens for different size hats. So if I wanted to press on this hat, I just swap out that platen for the bigger one, slide this hat on, boom. No creases, no issues, no nothing. Then you're like, oh man, I gotta go back to doing these. Take the big one off, put the small one on. Now it fits this. That's the main reason why I picked that up. I had the old Signature Series cap press before that one. Most of you guys remember I raffled that thing off at an ISS show. That was years ago. I'm talking years and years ago at an ISS show. I walked around with raffle tickets and I raffled off my own cap press for free. No real reason. I had it in my trunk and that was it. Now, when I had the other older cap press, it didn't have a removable platen. It had just one standard size. So what I would have to do if I wanted to press on something like this, I used to cut out a bunch of mouse pads and then build it up. So I would put the mouse pad underneath the hat and then try to build up the gap. Cause if you ever put a hat on a hat press, when you lay it down on the hat press, if it's not smooth all the way across and there's still a gap where you could push down like that, that's when you're gonna get creasing. So I would cut up a bunch of little mouse pads to fit the inside of the hat to fill in that gap so then you get a nice, clean, smooth surface to press on. That's time consuming. If you're doing like a dozen or two dozen hats, it takes a long time to put that in there on each hat, lay it down, 
press it on, take that out, put it into the next hat. It takes a long time. Way easier to swap out the platen, drop this hat on, boom, press it down, you're good to go. Main reason why I got it. Second reason is that Signature Series line is reliable as hell. Like I said, I do a lot of shirt the custom neck labels like the size labels with your clothing brand on it and all that stuff when i press them into there i don't use this press i use this one i just lay the neck over it boom press it down doesn't stretch the neck out onto the next one boom this thing heats up really quick small heating element so it heats up fast knocking them out psh, 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 quick as hell now question you might ask yourself is why do you only use five panels and not six panels when you're pressing on that this is a six panel hat let's just try to get close in there see that seam down the middle if you try to press something over that seam, it gets all weird. Like whatever you're pressing, if it's vinyl or whatever it is, that seam shows through and it makes things look kind of weird. Supercolor makes a headwear transfer that goes over that seam, which is cool. But for myself, I've always noticed that that seam and a heat press do not get along. So I use stuff like this. This is a five panel trucker. These can be sold to women and men. If you're doing custom stuff, these sell perfect for bachelor parties, bachelorette parties. When they're out at the pool, out in Vegas, and the whole bridal party is wearing these, it might say bridesmaids, it might say bride gang or whatever it is, whatever kind of weird saying you want to put on here with vinyl easy call easy sell women and men wear these trucker hats at the river at the pool when they're out in vegas simple simple sale so that's why i use these i personally stay away from the six panel hats when i'm heat pressing on any hats and i mainly use five panel hats they make five panel hats in a standard snapback they make these unstructured ones they make structured ones but I usually stick with five panel hats whenever I'm heat pressing because you get a smooth, even surface. So once again, do you need a hat press? You don't need it if you're not offering hats. Do you need this exact one? No, you don't. You could buy another heat press and build up that gap with the mouse pads like I was showing you. Didn't want to do that? Then look for one that has removable platens. This heat press nation one is cool because you don't have to buy the you don't have to buy the platen separately there are some hat presses out there where you have to buy the bottom platen separately this one comes with four all different sizes and they fit all different hats easy call now that you've seen the cap press now that you've seen my t-shirt press let me show you another press that i have in this shop as a different option for you i check this out this is the Racoma 15 by 15 heat press this press right here replaced a bigger more expensive press in my shop now i've been looking to replace that other press for a very very long time but as you know heat press nation presses sell out quick as hell i don't get any special treatment I have to buy it exactly like you guys. And whenever I see a restock, I try to buy it. And if the press that I want is sold out, I'm asked out too. So for a long time, I've been trying to replace a press. If you follow me on Instagram, you know exactly what press this press right here replaced. Outside of all that, I've tested out a lot of other ones. I'll buy presses from other companies. I have affiliate accounts with a bunch of different companies. I buy presses with my own money and I test them out. And if they don't hold up to my normal wear and tear, like my regular jobs that I do, then I can't use that in my shop. All the equipment that I show on my channel is stuff that I use day to day. This press right here gets ran day to day. I've only had it for maybe a month and we've already put maybe a thousand to 1200 shirts through it. So I know it holds up to my regular day to day. Some of the other presses that I had because of this same slide out function, you know what I mean? You guys know I'm big on this right here. Some of the other ones that I tried out suck. I was getting inconsistent heat. The pressure wasn't the same. I would maybe do 50 to 60 t-shirts before I started to notice inconsistent heating and things kind of acting a little weird. And that was a red flag for me for a lot of other presses. So that's why I didn't use them. That's why I never talk about them. And I ended up just selling them on offer up or Craigslist. After I buy them, I test them out before I introduce it to the channel, before I start using it in my shop. I gotta make sure the shit works before I talk about it, right? This is the only press that's held up to everything that I do in this shop. So it's the only reason why it actually replaced the other press that I had was because it could do 100 to 120 shirts in one sitting, no problem. After like 100 shirts, you gotta take a break anyways, you know what I mean? So you shut the machine off, drink a couple beers, flip it back on after 30 minutes to an hour, start pressing again, if you're doing a big job like that. That's one of the tests that I put it through. I wanna make sure, cause I do a lot of high volume stuff in here. And this press right here held up to that. My Heat Press Nation Signature Pro 
can do well over 150 shirts in one sitting with no issues. That sucker's a workhorse. This one right here holds up to the same amount of work and doesn't give me any issues. So that's why it's in my shop. That's why I use it now. I'll leave links to all the stuff that I'm talking about so you could do a little bit more research. You don't have to buy any of this, but this is a good option. If you can't find another press, this right here is a really good option for you because it has the same exact slide out drawer. This one's cool. It has a touch screen, digital readout. Very easy to navigate, very easy to use. This Teflon sheet is only held on by magnets. You could take it off. You don't really need it. But this press right here is a workhorse also. All right, hopefully after seeing all the presses in my shop, you have a better idea on what you're looking for and what to look out for when you're buying a heat press. The main thing that I like is not working underneath the heat. As seen right here with the slide out drawer not working underneath the heat as seen on the Rakoma press you're not working underneath the heat and if you're looking for a budget friendly option you can always go with the craft pro heat press by heat press nation that also has slide out drawer same reliability and same customer service as this press and this press that's what I like to buy into when I'm buying a heat press is buying into the customer service in case I have any issues. If you bought a heat press off of eBay and it's being drop shipped from China and you don't know who the drop shipper is and you run into some issues, it's almost impossible to contact the manufacturer and help troubleshoot something or help get something fixed. If this press ever went down, if I had issues with this press, I can always hit them up. Heat Press Nation is always a phone call or email away from myself. Same exact reason why I went with the Rakoma press was one, it held up to my testing over all the other ones that I started testing out. And two, customer service was on point every single time one phone call or one email away and I was on the phone or talking through email with the technician to help me troubleshoot any issues that I had. That's what I like to buy into when I'm buying something like this that my business is gonna be built around is buying into the actual company and customer service. I wanna make sure that they back this press up and I wanna make sure that I have a company that's gonna be willing to help me out if it goes down to get me back up and running again. So think about these things when you're buying a press. You don't have to buy any of the equipment that I use. I'm just showing you guys the options and showing you guys what I personally use and why I use them. Remember, when you're buying something like this, make an educated purchase. Do a lot of research, watch some videos, do some reading, and then contact these companies. Hit up Heat Press Nation. Ask them all the questions you want. Let them answer the questions for you before you place an order. Same thing with Rakoma. Hit them up, contact them, ask them questions. Don't just go based off of what I'm saying or any other content creator. Talk to somebody over there. You don't even gotta talk to a sales rep. You could talk to customer service. You could talk to a technician. Make sure you get your questions answered before you make any purchases. That way you're not wasting money and that way you know exactly what you're buying into, all right? So remember, buy a heat press that fits your statement of work. Bigger does not always mean better. Buy within your budget. You don't have to buy the most expensive press because the most expensive press doesn't mean that it's necessarily better. Like I said about the Rakoma, it replaced one of those high-end expensive presses. And that's what I use to replace that high-end expensive press. And with all heat presses, remember you can always upgrade later. If you can only afford a certain press now, make some money. And if you feel that your production's ramping up, you can always upgrade to something else after. You don't have to buy the biggest, baddest, best thing out the gate. You just wanna buy something reliable out of the gate, all right? Now, hopefully this helps somebody out out there. If you use any of these presses, let me know in the comments. Follow me on Instagram, BigBrandoTV. Catch you guys on the next one, man. Yeah.